Hey guys, welcome to episode 2 of my shredding series. Today we're going to crack into diet and how you should be eating if you want to lose some fat or just some overall weight. Okay guys, how should you be eating if you want to lose a bit of fat? Well, I'm here today to let you know that if you take in all the information I'm about to tell you, I guarantee you if you do it right, you will lose fat. You will get lean and you will get the body that you want. You just need to understand this side of nutrition because nutrition is, honestly, I reckon it's way more important than training. Training, you can get specific and all that sort of stuff, but nutrition, you have to understand and you have to put in work outside of the gym as well. So, I'm going to get started with the app that I use for my dieting, and it's called My Fitness Power. Now, you do not need to abide by this app, but I suggest using it for at least one to two weeks to find out what's actually in the foods that you're eating and what you should and shouldn't be eating in terms of the goals that you want to achieve. I have a whole guide on that app, how to use it and how to do all the stuff in this video and all that sort of stuff. So if you learn better by reading and you want a document you can always refer to rather than clicking on my YouTube link to rewatch the video, I will send you that for free. Just send me an email. I'll leave that in the description. You'll find it through my Instagram and all that sort of stuff. And I'll send you that guide for free, just so you understand this because it's important. Now, finish with my fitness pal, we're gonna move on. So pretty much, we're gonna talk about your body's metabolic rate, your BMR, your metabolism, all that good stuff. Now, this number is how many calories you burn in a day. You eat above that, you put on weight, you eat below that, you lose weight. Now, finding this number, how do we do it? You can find links online, there's calculators all over the shop. Pick one, I'll leave a link in the description for one. That's step one on how to do that. Step two on how to find your BMR is literally picking an amount of calories that you're gonna to stick to. Eat that for about a week, seven days. Weigh yourself every single morning on an empty stomach on those days. If your weight stays the same, you're on bullseye. If your weight's going up, you're a bit too high. If your weight's going down, you're a bit too low. So you can do it that way. It's a little bit more time consuming, but it is gonna be a little bit more accurate than an app because the app's not taking into consideration a whole bunch of things. But it is still gonna give you a rough number, which is a good place to start. Now, now that we're done with the BMR side of things, I've mentioned this in a lot of videos before. So if you wanna recap on those where I may have gone into a little bit more depth, feel free to watch those. The most important bit of this video is how to calculate your protein, your carbohydrates, and your fats. Now, I wanna give you an overview of these three types of food groups, so to speak. So, pretty much your calories are either made up of protein, carbohydrates, or fats. Now, how to get your head around it. One gram of protein, is equal to four calories. One gram of carbohydrates is also equal to four calories. And one gram of fats is equal to nine calories. So your calories are distributed into these three macronutrients. Now, so think of protein is equal to muscle. Protein helps your muscles recover, helps them grow, and it also helps you keep very satiated. So to break it down, protein equals muscle. Simple as that. Carbohydrates, your body's most preferred energy source. Very important for brain function and just overall not being hangry. So pretty much carbohydrates equals energy. Fats are not to be avoided. Fats are essential for normal hormone function, they're essential for your hair, for your skin, for your fingernails, all that weird stuff you don't think about, well that's coming from your fats. Do not avoid fats, but don't get them from Big Macs, probably get them from peanut butter and all that sort of good stuff. So, to break those three down for you, protein, muscle, carbohydrates, energy, and fats, 
just essential, normal body function, all that sort of stuff. Now, now that we're done with BMR, the app you're gonna be using, and the three macronutrients, I'm gonna teach you how to calculate how much protein, carbohydrates, and fats you need to be eating in relation to how many calories you should be eating. So once you have your calories, you find out your macronutrient distribution, and that's essentially what you stick to. It gets a bit tedious, but it's something to give you a really good rough idea. Now, I do not suggest doing this day by day, weighing all your foods every day, tracking them in the app every day. I do that, I'm very used to it. It's just a thing for me now. Yeah, I have a couple days here and there where I just eat intuitively and eat what I want, but I'm a numbers person and I prefer knowing how much I'm eating. That's just me, but I do suggest that you do this for at least a week just so you know what's in the food you're eating and what you should be eating and how your daily diet should look like. So when you do go without the app, you can make a smart decision and be like, hey, I'm probably low on protein today, I'm gonna have some tuna, or I haven't had any carbs today, I'm gonna have a little bit of rice, rah, rah, rah. That is how I'm trying to get this across. So, let's go into calculations. All right, guys, so, we got the calculations all sorted. So I'm gonna do an example from when I started my cut when I was 85 kilograms. I'm now 78 kilograms. So I've lost about six, seven kilos. So that's been ever so successful. But um, essentially I started at 85 kilograms. So I'm gonna calculate step by step everything you need to be doing to get your numbers and to get your overall cows. So for me, I know my BMR is about 2,000 to 800 to 3,000 calories. That was when I was 85 kilograms. So what I did is I got my caloric deficit. So I decided that I was gonna start eating 2,500 calories a day, which was about a 300 to 500 caloric deficit. So I wanted to start nice and slow and maintain as much muscle as I could. So 2,500 calories is what I started on. Now, to work out my protein, I was 85 kilograms, which turned into 187 pounds. So to work out my protein, I did protein is equal to 187 times one, which is equal to 190 grams. Now, that is because to work out your protein, you wanna be doing 0.8 to 1.2 times your body weight in pounds. Now, I've mentioned that in one of my previous videos, I believe, but I also have that in the guide that I've written up in word form, so if you want that, I'll send you guys that for free, so you can just go over these calculations and really regurgitate the information and take it all in. So for my protein, I got 187, which is my body weight in pounds, times one, because I just chose one for mine, you can do 0.8 to 1.2, whatever you want between there. 0.8 more if you have a little bit more fat and you not so much of your body is lean body mass and 1.2 is like you're shredded you have a lot of lean body mass you need more protein so there's that range i just choose one and i just go a bit above so for my calculation i got 187 grams and i just rounded that up to about 190 grams now to work out your fats Fats is just a nice simple calculation. I just do 0.4 times my body weight in pounds. So for me, 187 pounds. So I did 0.4 times 187 and that gave me 75 grams. I believe I rounded that one as well. Definitely wasn't exact. So I got 75 grams of fats. So I've worked out 190 grams of protein, 75 grams of fat. Now I need to work out my carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates, there's no calculation, it's just a filler. So if I was bulking, I would eat more carbs. If I was cutting, I'd eat less carbs. So because I have 2,500 calories overall, if I work out how many calories my fats and proteins make up and take it away from my total calories, the amount of calories that are left is how many calories I need to get from carbohydrates, yeah? So if you understand that, I'll take it through with you. So there's four, uh, four calories in one gram of protein. 
So I've got my number of protein, 190 grams, multiplied that by four, and that's given me 760 calories from protein. And I did the same for my fats. So I added 75 times nine, because there's nine calories per one gram of fats, and I have 75 grams of fat. So 75 times nine is 675 calories from fats. Now the total of the two is 1,435 calories from both my protein and my fats. So that's over half my calories from protein and fats. Now to work out your carbohydrates, you'd wanna grab your overall calories, which is 2,500, and take away the 1,435 calories, which leaves me with 1,065 calories left for my carbohydrates. Now, to change the calories into carbohydrates, there's four calories per one gram of carbohydrates. So, you divide 1,065 by four, which gives me 266.25 grams of carbs, which I rounded down to 260 grams. So, that is the calculations. Now, that's left me with protein, 190 grams, carbohydrates, 260 grams, fats, 75 grams, and my overall calories at 2,475. And I wanted about 2,500. All those numbers make me tired. So, we have our macronutrient distribution, we have our overall calories, now it's about using my fitness power to stick to those numbers. Now, if you don't know how to use my fitness power, I'm gonna say it again. I've literally written up a whole guide, how to use it, how to do these calculations, tips and tricks, when to weigh yourself, like the whole thing. If you want that, send me your email and I will give it to you for free. I want people to understand this because once you do Nutrition doesn't get easy, but at least you know what you're doing. You still need to put in the work, but in your mind you understand and you know where you need to start going right. So if you want that guide, you can find my email, corvus.fitness at hotmail.com. I'll leave that in the description for you guys to send an email and I will send it to you for free. So you don't have to stick to the app, but use it for at least a week so you know roughly what you should be eating, so you can tell in your day, oh, maybe I'm a bit low on protein, I'll eat a bit more of that today. And so you know what your daily diet should look like. And knowing how many calories are in the regular foods that you're eating, you'd be surprised how much calories are actually in tomato sauce. I don't know how many of you know how many calories there are, but honestly, you put a little bit on your tuna and rice, and it's about 30 calories. Like, it's, it's honestly not that much at all. To add that bit of flavor, it's a good sacrifice. So, a few things you can learn from using the app. Calculations are done. I'm just gonna go over the three ways, or the three different macronutrients, just a good summary of the calculations. Have your BMR. Take away 200 to 600 calories to get your caloric deficit. Protein, 0.8 to 1.2 times your body weight in pounds. Fats. 0.4 times your body weight in pounds. And to get your carbohydrates, it's just the excess calories left over once you've multiplied your grams of protein by four, your fats by nine. You have your total calories from those two, take it away from your total, you're left with how many calories you need from carbohydrates, divide that number by four, and you have how many calories you need, you know, how many grams you need of carbohydrates. So that's the calculation side of the nutrition. That's where it gets kind of ballsy, but we deal with it. We deal with it. So now a negative approach to flexible dieting. That is the title. That is the name for this sort of diet. A lot of people don't like it. And that is because of what I'm about to mention now, the negative approach to flexible dieting. Now there's two ways you can go. You can go, hey, okay. So flexible dieting gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Sometimes I do eat some junk food, some unprocessed food, but I honestly keep it about 80, 20. I'll have a burger here, like a Krispy Kreme, but 90% of my diet 
is clean, nutritious, and macronutrient, micronutrient dense. Getting your vegetables in and all that sort of stuff. But a lot of people take the app and be like, how much dirty shit can I fit into my diet while still hitting my macros? And that's where it gets kind of bad because it's not optimal and it's unhealthy. So you can honestly live a day at fast food stores and still hit your macros. You can go to Macca's, get hamburgers, like cheeseburgers without the cheese, hamburgers, lower the fat, go to KFC, get a couple stuff there, head to Nando's, grab some tenderloins, couple Krispy Kremes and then finish your day off with, I don't know, some waffles and you'll somehow merge and kind of hit your numbers. But during that day, you're eating a lot of shit that's high in sodium, high in fats, high in un high in processed foods and all that sort of stuff. And your body is just not going to run optimally. You're going to get lots of insulin spikes from your high sugar intake and all that sort of stuff. So yes, there is wiggle room with flexible dieting and it does give you that opportunity to maybe have a bit of Nutella and have a Krispy Kreme here and there and all these foods that you want to fit in, ice cream. You can work around that, but fit it around a very strong, healthy diet. Don't abuse it and be like, okay, wake up in the morning and be like, how fucked can my diet be today while still hitting my macros? Because yes, you're still hitting your macros, you're gonna be in a caloric deficit, you're gonna lose weight, but you're not gonna get optimal, like good sources of protein, your body's not gonna be running as efficiently, you're still, you're gonna feel more lethargic and all that sort of stuff, so make your diet as healthy as you can and only use this flexible side of the diet to supplement you when you're struggling. I'll go five days eating clean, I'll wake up, I'll be like, I'm craving a Zinger Burger. I'll get up, I'll have the Zinger Burger, I'll have a customize it so it's not as bad. I usually get it without mayo to lower the fat, I'll have that and the rest of my diet throughout the day will be fine. I'll get my veggies in, I'll hit on my macros and it'll get rid of that craving for me and I'll move forward like nothing happened. If you were trying to diet without this app, you would have that Zinger Burger and you would be like shit, I just broke my diet. I'm bad, I'm shit, I can't do it, I'm going to give up now, I'm just going to go back to how I was doing. That's the positive side, realizing that you can have sneaky meals here and there without beating yourself up about it, which is why I really am thankful for it because if you don't be aware of what's in the foods, you end up on chicken rice and broccoli six times a day and it's just not sustainable. I find flexible dieting very sustainable for me. And I highly suggest you do it for at least a week and find out what you should and shouldn't be eating. So that's covered the negative approach of flexible dieting. Pretty much don't be a pig, give or take. And the last topic I wanted to talk about on how to eat on a cut is intermittent fasting. Now, this is something I definitely practice because I find I'm very hungry at night and I'll explain intermittent fasting and why it benefits me. So intermittent fasting is pretty much where you don't eat throughout the whole morning and you delay your first meal to later in the day. Now, a lot of people say you have to do this for 16 hours to get like all the cell function and kill off your dead cells and that sort of stuff. I haven't really read into that too much because I don't do it for that reason. I simply do intermittent fasting so I save most of my calories for later in the day because A, Later in the day, I'm at home surrounded by food and I need calories left over so I can eat. <laughs> because if I eat breakfast and I eat when I'm out all day and I'm on the move and I get home and I have 200 calories, I'm home for three hours before I go to bed, I'm starving and I have two pieces of toast to eat. Like, it just does not work for me. So right now it is 12.50. I still haven't eaten today. I've had a workout. Actually, I've had a banana and that's all I've eaten. So I'm going to have my first meal at about 1.30, 2 o'clock. And that way I have calories spared for later in the day when I'm actually hungry, when I find I have most of my cravings and it works a lot better for me. So what I suggest you guys do is find when you're most hungry. If you're most hungry in the mornings, which I find most people aren't, have a fasting, like eat in the morning when you're hungry 
fast throughout the day and then don't eat until later in the night when you're gonna find yourself peckish and around your cupboard and you have to go to sleep because I can't sleep when I'm hungry. It just eats me alive. Like I know I can get up and smash a feed. So if I've saved my calories for later in the day, I'm fine. So that's something that really works for me and I suggest you guys do it. Have a read into it. Um, pretty much for me, I just keep it, delay my first meal. And if I'm hungry, I'll have a little snack in the morning. Sometimes I gotta get up at 5 a.m. for work, training clients and stuff, so maybe I will have a bit of a snack, but then I'll be at work all day and then I won't have my next meal to two o'clock. And it's hard, it's difficult, but you do get used to it. And the best way is to just stay busy. If you're doing nothing all day, you're sitting at home, you're surrounded by food, of course, you're gonna have the craving to eat. Go out, do something, see your friends, be away from it. Drink a ton of water. I've had like three, four bottles of water, five even today, and I haven't eaten. Just force water down, it'll keep you full. And also caffeine's a very good supplement to use because it is an appetite suppressant. And the best way to do this is obviously just shots of black coffee that contain no calories rather than having like a mocha or something like that that has all the fats and carbohydrates in there. So shots of black coffee. Um, I do use sugar-free Red Bull and the White Monsters. They are killers in terms of just a damn addiction, but they do help. They're not the healthiest thing, but you know, everyone has their weak points. So I definitely use those just to supplement myself throughout the day to get to that point. You can also use supplements such as Oxy Shred and all that sort of stuff that does have a bit of a caffeine kick in the morning just to get yourself started. And then you smash your first meal and save your calories for later in the day. So I know it's a lot to take in. This video has definitely gone for a while. I'm seeing the time ticking, I'm like, damn. I definitely know how to ramble, but this video is probably one of my most important videos. Like learning this, is just gonna get you where you wanna be. Once you get your head around this, it is literally, it, it's science. You eat above your BMR, you put on weight. You eat below, you lose weight. If you wanna lose weight, sometimes, even if you make your diet full clean and you go hard at it, you can still eat too much chicken. You can still eat too much veggies and still put on weight. If, you're, if your diet is immaculate and you're eating over your BMR, you're still gonna put on weight. And that's what people don't get. They're like, yeah, I'm eating healthy. I'm eating everything. I'm eating eight times a day. You know, I'm eating chicken. I'm eating broccoli. I'm eating a bit of rice, but I'm portioning it. You're still eating 3,000 calories of clean foods. That's why you're not hungry ever. Like, it, you're meant to be hungry at some points in the day if you're losing weight. Your body wants to eat more. Your body's addicted to the sugar. Your body's gonna give you withdrawals. Like, you have to give up something, and it's calories. Eat below your BMR and you're gonna lose weight. And it's the exact same for bulking. Same calculations, just for me, my maintenance is 2,800 to 3,000. If I wanted to bulk, I'd eat 3,200. Protein and fats stay roughly the same. Carbs move up, simple as that. Same with the training. Guys, please get your head around it. Your life will change, the gym will change food will change, you'll feel better for it, you'll look better for it, and things will just go where you want them to go. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I still got part three to do, which is gonna be about supplementation, which you guys should find interesting, I hope. Probably not, because you might not like what I have to say about them. But yeah, they definitely have benefits, but that's the next video, I'm gonna stop rambling. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends, tell your friends. Whatever you need to do just to get the word out about this form of eating and just educating yourself in nutrition so you can get to where you want to be. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.